what's up? It's Gazbot for another CDX review. Uh, this is a Power Ranger slash Sentai review of the Sentai character King Ranger from O Ranger, who was also translated into Power Ranger Zeo uh, as Jason the Gold Ranger. But this particular incarnation uh, of the figure, at least, uh, as far as I know, is only released in Japan as the Sentai version. So uh, while I'm totally for saying it's Power Ranger Sentai, this really is just Sentai. Just like Titanium Ranger is only Power Rangers. So let's take a look. Okay, here you can see the packaging that it came in and the various stickers. And uh, these stickers were on a little plastic strip that when I removed it didn't damage the packaging at all. So that was a cool feature that I've never seen before. Uh, and here's the back of the box. It shows the instructions and a couple of the basic features. And the side and the back of the box just basically showed the suit actor photos and the name of the character and product. And here's the tray. And now let's switch back to video. All right, so here we have the O-Ranger King Ranger, otherwise known as Jason, the Gold Ranger from Zeo and Power Rangers. He's about six inches tall. Matter of fact, let's go ahead and drop in the ruler. Um, yeah, I was overestimating a little bit. He's about five and a half inches, uh, which is roughly SH figure art size, um, and a little bit taller than the current Super Mega Force version, which uh, was my previous favorite version of this character. Uh, I'll compare those later. and. As you can see, he's pretty well detailed. You know, he's a little bit basic. He's got the kind of grippy hands that the old 90s version figures did have, uh, and Mighty Morphin and others. Um, but he has this beautiful vacuum chrome sort of shininess, which I'm a sucker for. If you've watched any of my videos, you know that. Uh, but especially on a figure like this, where it's trim and highlight. And they did a good job of getting it, you know, even the little stickers on his gloves and stuff. And I'm going to go ahead and bring it up close and see if you could see. There's detailing, like... Tamp not tampoed, stamped in, like into the molding right here to indicate the detail on his chest piece. Uh, and I kind of like that it's not painted or stickered, but just indicated there. Um, the the de the back of the figure doesn't look as good as the front. You got these joints are really noticeably bad. Um, but on the front, the knees look fine. Uh, the elbows again on the front not so great. From the side, they're actually a little better, even though they have these circles. Uh, and as far as posability, the legs go up, down. They actually go out. Not all the way, but a fair amount. You can bend at the knees. There's no real swivel uh, anywhere on the leg. The arms also go up and down. They're hindered by the shoulder uh, armor. They can go back, actually, a little bit more than they can go forward. Or, eh, about the same. Uh, up and out, same thing, bend at the elbow. But they do have a bicep swivel, so big yay for that. Um, these hands also, aside from being in the permanent grip, you can see they have a peg, and that's for grabbing weapons, such as, in his case, the staff. You can see it has a, a hole to peg it right in there. And uh, it's, it's a little, you know, goofy looking in terms of a realistic figure, but it does do a good job of making sure that the weapon stays in their hands uh, and doesn't fall out. It's, you know, even if it's on a shelf or you're playing, you know, that that's staying in there. Um, and if you turn it this way, you can't see the peg, so it's better. Um, now, this figure I bought in Japan from a, a vintage secondhand shop uh, called uh, Mandarake, which there's many of, and I bought it in a mall, a uh, Broadway mall in Nakano, and there's a whole bunch of uh, Mandrake, Mandrake in there uh, that are vastly different. They seem like completely different stores, just unified by a singular name. Um, wow, this, this joint right here is super tight, like to the point where I'm afraid I'm going to break it. Um, and I thought this figure was used, and then I thought it was new, and I went back and forth, and I think it either was dead stock or it was lightly used. Um, the legs are a little bit loose. Not crazy loose, but they don't feel nearly as tight as the arms. And I did notice, uh, see if you can see this, there's some yellowing here. Now that could be just because it was sitting in a package, or it could be because somebody put it in front of a window in the sun. It's not terrible, and you know I'm not totally regretting it, because here's the other thing. I got this figure for a little bit less than $10 US. $10 US. Uh, it had a retail sticker on the box uh, for 2,480 yen, which is you know about $22, $23. And then there was a whole bunch of other stickers uh, marking it down and showing the different prices, and it settled on $10, $10 essentially US. It was a little bit more than that in yen. Um, and I, I would have paid 20 for it. I was super thrilled. I've looked at this on eBay, and the fact that I found it for that price is exactly the kind of thing I was looking for in Japan. Uh, but this can be found in America, primarily on eBay. Um, and I recommend you check it out, especially if you're a fan of this character. Now, that being said, I haven't really shown you much. So let's look at the, the big gimmick for this figure. He comes with his weapon, great. Uh, also, I guess I should show you, the weapon can go into the holster. You just sort of clip it in there, like that. And it, it works pretty well. Um, 
Yeah, I don't, I don't know if he wore it that way in the show, or maybe it shrunk down or whatever. I don't plan on keeping it in the holster. Uh, but the big gimmick is this cannon, uh, which is known as the Ore Bazooka, um, or the Zeo Cannon. And this was like a, one of the weapons that all the Rangers uh, would get together and fire. And I think it was introduced about halfway through the season, so a lot of people were like, oh, look, selling more toys, which might be true, but you know what? It's a cool toy, so... You know, a lot of things are made to sell toys. Uh, now, this does m have an action, um, but it needs batteries. So I'm going to put the batteries in. Oops. And you can see there's a little pin peg thing right here that you kind of have to scorch over, scorch, <laughs> slide over. And then, oh man, see if I can get it. Push the pin in, right. And then this is supposed to pop out. Now, this is where I look at the instructions. Now the instructions show me how to put it on, so I'm guessing maybe it was packaged off or it's just you're supposed to reverse it. But it's in Japanese, of course. And uh, when I the little bit I could read, it's like Ore Bazooka. Oh, so it's it's Ore Bazooka. I know that. That does not tell me how to get in. Uh, shiru Shiru. All right, still not helping. So let's. Uh, oh, there we go. I guess once you maybe that pin doesn't even matter. What does that do? There's a little, there's a little gold pin right here. It goes in and out, and I don't know what that's supposed to do. Maybe nothing. Maybe <laughs> I don't think it does anything. It's just a design thing that moves. So ignore that. Basically, you just pop it out, and inside, wow, you can see it's nice and clean. Uh, it takes two AAA batteries, although this is calling it four R O three me something. So hopefully, some American batteries will work in here. Let's pop them in. There we go. Yosh, and. There's a button right on top here, so I'm guessing that's what we need to press. Let's move this and see what we get. Wow, it could not be more generic. <laughs> let's let's get up close to the camera. Oh my gosh, it's literally that sound effect that every toy in the 80s and early 90s, every toy ray gun had, where you press it. I think they used to sell these like to be in a car or on a bike too. It's just like 12 different sounds that it cycles through. I like that it has a little light here. That's kind of cool. But I guess I, I really thought it would be more. The light in the front's a nice touch too. That's kind of cool. Uh, I guess I was also hoping this spins manually, but I guess I was hoping it would spin by batteries. I guess I was hoping too much. I wish I could do the lights and just pick one sound instead of the cycle because some of these work better than others. But, you know, again, it's not a super expensive toy, so I, I guess I shouldn't be that picky. Uh, now, theoretically, he's supposed to fire this, but you can see it's the size of him, so that would be ridiculous. He, he, he can't hold it. I mean, I could kind of force in his hand, but he's also got the pegs. He's also got the pegs, like I said, so it, it makes it difficult, and even if I could kind of sort of force it in there, it's, it's, it's just not working. I mean, maybe somebody could do it, but I'm not going to try because I feel like I'm just going to damage my stuff. Uh, how you're supposed to do it is it comes with this stand, which has these two little guys. So you slot them in. One. And this plastic is very soft, actually, compared to the rest. It's not ABS. I'm guessing, you know, PVC or whatever. I'm not great at material, but it's definitely softer than everything else. And so then this gets mounted in here like this. Okay. Then what you would do is take your King Ranger figure, and he's got pegs, you know, very old school, but, you know, it was like that for a reason. It works. Um, now, unfortunately, he can't twist at the waist, which is what I'd really like to do right here. Um, but you could kind of fake it to to greater or lesser degree, depending on how much effort you want to put in to get him holding it, turn his head. And that, that actually looks pretty awesome. And it, it, it looks like, you know, he's firing it. And if I had the other Rangers, I could gather them all around it. And, you know, this actually makes me kind of want to seek out other Rangers of this scale uh, from O-Ranger specifically. I mean, maybe I can get the Zeo counterparts. I know they had, this is closest to the motorcycle figures they had. The um, the Zeo jet cycles is, is what they had. Um, and there was a version of him with that, although he didn't have the chrome. So uh, this is pretty nice. And then, you know, fire with my generic sound. Fire with my other generic sound. Um, now, that's most of the figure. And I'm in love with it. It's, it's totally great. One other thing, though, in the package, it came with this sticker sheet, and they're unapplied, which is interesting, which also, again, makes me think maybe this is new or whatever. It's hard to tell with some of these Japanese toys, because it, it could be so lightly used that it seems new. Um, but the, the, one of the main things is, like I said, the, the feet, the legs are a little bit loose. Not a ton, but just enough to make me wonder. But that's not part of the toy review. Well, unless it's new, but 
I wouldn't hold that against it. I mean, obviously he's standing, he's on like cloth, he's not even on the actual uh, surface, uh, a hard flat surface. So let's see, I'm going to quick consult the instructions to see what these uh, stickers are for. Okay, so I've consulted uh, the instructions, which are kind of on the back of the box. I tried reading this to think it would help, but it just says O-Ranger uh, Sound Bazooka, because it makes the sound, uh, King Ranger, and then I wasn't getting anything more from it. But then I saw that there were actually some numbers on here, and you could see this little thing here, three, and then the band, and then one and two uh, were for the bazooka. So these go on his legs, and these go on this part of the bazooka. So I'm going to go ahead and apply those now. I applied the first one here, and I, uh, it's shiny and it's nice, uh, I'm notoriously bad at applying stickers, uh, specifically when it comes to orientation and stuff, so I'm going to show you something that I realized. Um, there is a little divot, if you can see it's a circle, but there's a little divot on the top there, you can kind of see it. And in the plastic, there's the same divot uh, on the back side here. I know it's kind of hard to see with the camera, but if you're getting this and applying the stickers, just make sure to align the divots and you'll be okay. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Now when it comes to the leg sticker, as you can see, I put one on but not the other. Similarly, there's a band molded in the plastic where clearly it goes, which is great because I thought I was going to have to estimate. And on the back, there is more than you need, so it overlaps on itself, so you don't have to worry about meeting exactly. Uh, so once again, as someone who's not great at stickers, this has made it very easy for me. Uh, and what I do uh, is just took this band and placed the middle of it here so that the seam, while it's not very noticeable, it'll still be on the back. So I'm going to go ahead and apply the other one now. All right, and so there you can see he's got the gold bands on his legs. It's kind of odd that I had to apply them considering he had gold band stickers on his gloves already. I mean, I'm assuming it's a cost saving measure or maybe a last minute addition. Um, it makes him look better for sure, but I don't know why they made me do it. Similarly, with the bazooka, you know, there's a gold sticker here, but I had to put that one on. I'm not complaining. It's just one of those, it's a weird decision. Like, did that save them seven cents per figure or something? Who knows? All right, moving on. So there's a lot to love about this figure. Um, it is a little bit awkward, the posing. Um, I don't know if you can tell, but it's hard to get both feet into the pegs. It, it ends up being a little bit off on one side. Um, and the pose it wants you to get it into on the box, where he's sort of holding the back and holding the front, again, that could be awkward to get into. You sort of have to fake it uh, and pretend you're, you're playing towards the camera angle to get it to fit uh, the look as opposed to actually be grabbing it. it tends to work better. Here's a couple pictures I took of various poses uh, using a Tamashi stand to do a kick uh, and a few other things. Uh, and he has, you know, pretty good posability for the type of figure he is. Uh, I tend to like posing him next to the cannon where he's sort of marshalling an army as opposed to firing it, but you can set it up to be firing. And at the end of a long day, even King Ranger needs to relax in his chair! Hilarious! Here he is next to my Super Mega Force version. You can see he's taller, shinier, and better in all ways. And here's just the size lineup to give you an idea how big he is. And there's the cannon to similarly give you an idea how big that is. And here he is on my shelf as one of the commanders of the Sentai so Army. So generally speaking, I really like this figure. And I know I tend to give a lot of positive reviews, but that's, I guess that's just because I like the toys I buy. <laughs> um, the positives are the super shiny chrome. Um, he He's reasonably posable and detailed, especially for a vintage figure uh, being from the 90s. Uh, he comes with this awesome bazooka that, while limited, is electronic. This stand that it comes with is great. Uh, the bazooka also has chrome on it. There's way more positive than negative. Um, the negatives would be, uh, from the back, he doesn't look great. His joints uh, on his elbows are a bit uh, garish and exposed. There could be more detailing on his staff weapon. The sounds and light on the bazooka are a little bit disappointing. Um, the fact that it doesn't spin except manually is a little bit disappointing. Um, but these are minor nitpicks. Uh, now, this figure is a recolor um, of... They have O-Ray... Uh, the O-Ray bazooka for O-Red, uh, which is the Red Ranger, which was Tommy from Zeo. Um, same basic figure setup, same style figure, um, but with a red bazooka, which is how it looked in the show, from what I understand, the Zeo Cannon, and this is the repaint, that's the original. So, um, if you can't find this one, or if you prefer the Red Ranger, you can get that one. Uh, I just looked on eBay to check it out, and this is uh, July 2015. I saw the red version going for 46 US dollars, uh, 
buy it now or best offer with free shipping. That seems a little high. Didn't see uh, gold or King Ranger, so I'm not sure exactly what these are going for right now. Like I said, I got mine for $10, which is a crazy steal. Uh, but I would say $25 for this set is well worth it. More than that is going to depend on how much of a fan of the character you are or how much a fan of this type of toy. Like I said, the Chrome sells it for me. I might even go higher than $25, but I think the average consumer should be willing to pay about $25 for this. Um, if you could get it for less than that, definitely do. Um, and that's really, I guess, all I have to say about it. There, it's a simple figure, but it, it really delivers. Uh, the figure itself is nice enough, even without the cannon. But with the cannon, with the stand, it makes a really great display piece uh, that you could put together on a shelf all by itself or to fit in with the rest of your collection. So uh, hopefully you found that informative. So for Collection DX, I'm Gazbot. Uh, you can check out the site for more reviews and news and all that kind of stuff. You can check out our show, which we do every two weeks. Uh, usually me and Josh B, sometimes J-Man or Charlie, uh, Chachi Power. You know, you never who's going to jump in. And uh, yeah, so thanks a lot. I've been Gazbot. This has been King Ranger from O-Ranger. And we are done.